Good morning once again, Facebook family and friends, YouTube family and friends around the world. God bless you today. This truly is another day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. In spite of what's going on around the world, we know that God is in control of everything. In fact, we read what Jesus said. We know that things are bad and dangerous, but you know what Jesus said? He said these things must come to pass because the end is upon us. And that's not what we're going to talk about today. But it's good to know that with all that is going on in the world today, and I know that your spirit is vexed and sad and broken over the terrible things that are happening in the world today. But Jesus told us, look up because your redemption is drawing nigh. Today we're going to be talking about uh, God created the Garden of Eden and he put Adam and Eve in that garden and wanted relationship with them. And he would come down, as you know, in the cool of the day and his voice would walk in the garden and he'd talk with them. He wanted relationship is what God wanted and is what God had with them for a little while until the devil stepped in and uh, caused us to be separated from God through sin. And so here we are in present day because of the fall of Adam and Eve. Well, God still wants that relationship with man. God still wants to talk with man one-on-one. -on -one, and he's made that possible through Jesus Christ. And so God is going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. And there are certain people who are going to dwell in that new earth and that is what we're going to talk about today who is going to dwell in the new earth what type of people will be able to dwell there let's get right into the scripture because i'm going to do a little bit of reading today uh, but we want to start with psalms 37 and we want to read verse 11. And this is a psalm of David. And, uh, you know, the 37th psalm is just a wonderful psalm. It speaks to so much. And that's one of the things we all like about David. Uh, yes, he was truly a man after God's own heart. And one of the things that made him a man after God's own heart is he was just honest about where he was in his own heart, in his own life, what was going on in his life. And this psalm, when he starts out in verse 1, Fret not thyself because of evil do doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. And he goes on. And we know in David's life that could have been so many situations that because David had enemies for a long time until God gave him rest. And so we don't know exactly who he was talking about at the time, which enemies he was talking about, but that's, that's how David starts this psalm out. And he gets down into verse 11 and he says, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that is forever settled in heaven. Father, we thank you that you, the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost dwell in heaven, and you three are one. Speak to us out of your word today. Father, let your word fall on good ground. Let it bring forth fruit 100% in the name of Jesus. I ask that you would think through my mind and speak through my mouth by your spirit in the name of Jesus, we cannot know the things of you, Father, without your spirit, who searches all things about you, even the deep and mysterious things of you. So we ask you to speak to us, Father, by your spirit today, in the name of Jesus. Let your word be rightly divided, 
that those who hear it may be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. So we're talking about the meek. That's who we're talking about. We're talking about the meek, David said, shall inherit the earth. That word meek certainly does not mean weak. It does mean gentle. It does mean kind. And it does mean humble. And that is going to depend on where you read it in the scripture. It could give any one of those definitions. And it's not talking about uh, somebody's uh, character. We know people who are just, you know, uh, calm, gentle in their character. That's just who they are. You know, it's a meekness not expressed in a person's outward behavior, not your character. It is deeper than character traits. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, it's deeper than how you even, a nice person, a gentle person, would even be kind and gentle and how they would even treat other people. No, it's deeper than that. This meekness that David is talking about here, those people who are going to inherit the earth, the new earth, those, that meekness, that is a part of their spirit. That's not their character. See, the person who's meek in their character upset them, get them angry and see if they stay meek. No, no, they're not going to stay meek. They're going to come out of character. No, no. So that's not the meekness that we're talking about here. Meekness certainly, uh, certainly is not weakness. No, no, no. Uh-uh. The meekness that we're talking about is one's will in total obedience and submission to God. That's the meekness that we're talking about. Those are the people, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 5, in the Beatitudes that the meek shall inherit the earth. And even over in Revelations 21, that we will read in verse 7, it says, he that overcomes, that's overcomes the world, the wicked sinful world system, he that overcomes shall inherit, inherit, same word, the meek shall inherit. This is that same word in verse 7 of Revelations 21. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Now, all things that he's talking about, when we go back and we read, he's going to be talking about the new earth. Everything in the new earth, those who overcome sin, who endure until the end, they are going to uh, receive all things. In verse 30 and chapter 37 of Psalms in verse 11, David says, and they shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace because that was the initial intent of God for mankind in the garden. He made the garden, he made it beautiful. He made the mist to come up from the earth and to, to water the plants. See, it didn't rain in the garden. God caused the mist to come up and that's how the garden was watered. And it was beautiful and he put everything in that garden, all things to enjoy. He put everything in that garden for Adam and Eve to enjoy. And he himself would come down and talk with them, you know? They had a relationship. That was the original intent of God with mankind. And do you know that God has never changed his mind? He has never changed his mind about how he loved man and how he wanted to have relationship with man. So we know the story how for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever of mankind would believe and receive 
his son Jesus Christ would not perish, stay separated from God through sin, but now eternally in hell, but would have everlasting life, inherit the new earth. So that now we're not in the garden anymore, but we shall be in the new earth. I'm sure there'll be some garden situations there, but we are going to be in the new earth because God, that is what God wants for us he wants to have that relationship now when i think about uh meekness and and i i looked up definitions and i studied greek words and hebrew words and all of that you know it, th this is not talking about uh let me see uh meekness you think about uh, a stallion a horse a very powerful and beautiful horse that horse is destructive and dangerous until he is broken so that that rider could ride him, right? Yeah, that is, a, now we have power under control. And so that now the, the owner of that horse or the rider can now uh, guide that horse because he's got bits in his mouth and he can lead him and guide him and turn him where he wants to go. We're not talking about that meekness. We're not talking about power under control. No, we're not talking about that because what power does man have over himself? What power does man have in the world? Uh, we have dominion uh, an authority because God gave it to us, but we also gave up that dominion to Satan when we disobeyed God. So you see, we're not talking about meekness, pow uh, power under control. We're not talking about a strong man holding an infant baby and holding that baby so gently as not to hurt that child. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a life totally submitted to the will of God. You see, Adam and Eve was totally submitted to the will of God. What was the will of God? Of all the trees in the garden, you may eat the fruit thereof, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. That was the will of God for them. He told them, okay? So they knew what the will of God was. Uh, you see, it, there's a difference when a person don't do because they didn't know versus a person who knew and still didn't do. Even the scripture says that those who knew who did, did not know and didn't do, they shall be beat with a few stripes. But those who knew and did not do, they shall be beat with many stripes. So there is a difference, as there is a difference between a premeditated crime versus just you went and created a crime. It holds a, a stronger penalty for premeditated. So they knew what the will of God was and deliberately disobeyed the will of God because they let the devil get into their head. They let the devil deal with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Oh, I'm going to be like God. Oh, my eyes will be open and I'll be able to see. Why? God do know that in the day that you do this, you'll be like God, pride of life. You see, so it was the will of God that was disobeyed that caused the fall of man. So you see, this meekness has everything to do with the will of God being obeyed. And when I think about the will of God being obeyed, I thought about, you know, several people in the Bible who we esteem highly. We certain, certainly esteem Moses highly. Oh, Moses was a gentle man. The Bible says Moses was a meek man. Uh, he certainly was not weak. He uh, had access 
to God himself. God said, Moses is my friend. He told Aaron and uh, Miriam, come out here. I want to talk to you guys because you hurt my friend. And he brought him out and he said, hey, you hurt someone that I love. When I speak to prophets, I speak to them in dreams and visions. But when I speak to Moses, I speak to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Because you heard him, Miriam, you got leprosy. And Aaron got scared to death and was like, Moses, talk to your friend and tell him, please, please don't, don't, don't uh, uh, destroy me. So God, Moses prayed for Aaron and God stayed in his hand because God was angry at how they treated his friend Moses, a meek man. He was a humble and a gentle man. He certainly was not weak because uh, he had the very power of God behind him. He saw God. God said, listen, I got to put you in the cleft of the rock. You can't see my face because you won't live and you still got work to do. But I'm going to let you see my glory. See, so I thought about Moses. He certainly was special. But you see, God said to Moses, he said, Moses, speak to the rock so the people can have water. And you, we know the story. The people got on Moses' nerve and Moses hit the rock and the rock gave water. And so you see, he disobeyed the will of God. Moses did. And because he disobeyed the will of God, God said, you're not going into the promised land. So you see, Moses, we could, I couldn't use Moses as an example of a person whose life was totally submitted to God. Well, then I thought, okay, Joshua and Caleb, yeah, but they were men of war. Okay. Then I thought, Abraham, well, yeah, Abraham lied. He, he lied. Okay, and now we know David. We love David, but we know God said, you can't even build me a house because you got blood on your hands. Not only that, but you're a murderer. You're repentant, but you murdered. So we know David was not, his will was not totally submitted to God. He had to pray and say, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So you see, because David got off course. We know the story. We know God blessed him. He got back on, but he got off. And so I thought, hmm, you know, the only person I know who totally obeyed the will of God all the time was Jesus Christ. Was Jesus Christ. He never disobeyed the will of God. It was in his keeping the will of God that you and I are saved today. It was in his obedience to the will of God, oh, that your name and mine could be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that we could have access back to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 53 and 7. Let's see what Isaiah said about Jesus. Here we go. 53 and 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Look at that. Isaiah is talking about Jesus. He's saying... They crucified him, they killed him, they beat him, they did all of these horrible things to him. Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus didn't answer. He said, do you hear me talking to you? Don't you know I could, I got power to Jesus? Say, you know, only power you have is what my father give you. Because this is the will of God that I die. See? And so, uh, Jesus, when you go to Luke 9... That's who he was. he was. He was like a lamb going to the slaughter, but he did not open his mouth. Why didn't Jesus open his mouth? He told Peter, put your sword up. Don't you know I can call legions of angels? Why didn't Jesus call those legions of angels? Mm. Let's see, why didn't he call them? I'm going to Luke 9, and I'm going to read verse as soon as I get there. One more page. 
Luke 9, I'm going to read verse 22. Why didn't Jesus call those legions of angels? Why didn't Jesus stop those people from hitting him, spitting on him, putting a crown of thorns upon his head? Look at Luke, the ninth, the ninth chapter, verse 22 says, and this is Jesus, the son of man. This is what Jesus is saying to his disciples. The son of man must, it's got to happen, it's going to happen must suffer many things and be listen to what he says about himself and he could have said i must suffer many things i am going to be rejected of the elders the leaders the leaders are going to reject me and the chief priests the the religious priests are going to uh, reject me the scribes they're going to reject me and listen listen what else he says and i'm going to be slain and he's saying this to them. Look what he says. And then I'm going to be raised on the third day. He knew why he came into this earth. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through the son might be saved. Jesus knew that. He knew what the will of the Father was concerning him. And even though the will entailed that he would suffer, he would be rejected, even be slain, he submitted himself to the will of God. That is meekness. That is the meekness that God is talking about. Now look what Jesus says in verse 23. He says, and he, ah, and he said to them all. Now he had just told them I'm about to be rejected to, to the point I'm going to even be slain. And, and to make it plain, I'm going to even be killed. But now he says in verse 23, and if any of y'all want to come after me, and if any of y'all want to be like me, well, why do I want to be rejected? Why do I want to be slain? Whoa, why do I want all of that? He said, and if any of you will come after me, if you will be like me, what you've got to do first is, here is meekness, let him deny himself. You cannot walk with God and yourself at the same time. You've got to admit and submit self, your will, to the will of God. And so he said you've got to deny yourself. Jesus denied himself. Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? Because they said he said he's a king. Well, are you the king of the Jews? Where is your kingdom? Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world. Huh? He was a king. He had the the Bible tells us in Romans and let uh, Hebrews let all the angels worship him. The Bible says that God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth. And yet he denied who he was. Oh my God. Woo! I'm feeling this thing right now. He denied who he was for the will of God to be done. That's what allows me to be sitting here right now and us not to have been destroyed. Praise God. He said, You've got to deny yourself. And then you got to take up your cross. Every one of us have a cross. And I don't know what yours is. But every one of us have a cross. I do know this, that we must do the will of the Father. Jesus says this in Matthew 7, not those who say, Lord, Lord, not those who are gifted and talented are coming into my Father's kingdom or even can see the kingdom, but those who do the will, those are the meek, they do the will of the Father. Those who do the will, see, doing the will of the Father, uh, that is deeper than being a calm person in your character. No, 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 no. 
No, it's deeper than that. Doing the will of God is deeper than you having a gift and a talent. It's deeper than that. It's denying yourself. Can you deny yourself? Take up your cross and follow Jesus. He said, look, if you're going to be like me, you got to deny yourself. And you got to do the will of the Father. Let me keep moving. Woo. Luke 22. Let's look at Luke 22. See what Jesus is saying, what's happening in Luke 22. Now that was Jesus submitting his will to the will of the Father. Luke 22 and verse 42. Let's see. 2242. Now this is Jesus saying, Father, if you if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Watch this. Nevertheless, not my will, not myself, not my position, not who I am, because I'm a king. I am denying my kinghood. I'm denying my authority because Peter, put your weapon up because don't you know I can call legions of angels right now and put a stop to this thing right now, but not my will. What'd he say? But your will, Father, be what? Done. That's meekness. That's the meekness this word is. Not my, can you say that to God? Can you say, Lord, not who I want to marry, not the job I want to have, not the church I want to go to, not how I want to spend my money, not what I want, God, but what do you want from me? Oh, my God, that's meekness. That is a life totally submitted to the will of God. Listen, for we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. He has created these bodies as for temples of the Holy Ghost to live in us and to walk in us and to have fellowship with us and to work his will through us in the earth. Oh, my God. That's what Jesus said. He said, now we're talking about meekness. What We're talking about the meek shall inherit. They shall obtain the new earth. They're going to be there. Inherit. All right, it's going to be given to them, those who totally submitted their way, not lukewarmers, not those of us who, when nobody's looking, we dabble, we dabble a little bit, not those who live by astrology, not those who burn candles to bring good vibes into their houses, no, 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 into their lives, no, but those who say, not my will, Father, but your will be done. Oh my God, that's what Jesus said. That was Jesus totally submitting, not, not just, oh. See, it's easy to say, okay, God, you don't want me to have that job. You want me to have this job. I mean, because still you have a job, right? But Jesus said, no, but you want me to die. But you want me to die, Father. Okay, I'm going to lay down, listen. He laid down his life willingly. No one took it from him. You cannot take anything from God. He gave his life. Even to, the Bible says he was obedient even to the death of the cross. In other words, he said, go ahead, nail me to the cross. He, he was still. He let them put the nails in his hand. He could have stopped it. He could have got down. They screamed it. Hey, you, you saved other people. Come on down from that cross. Save yourself. Other folks on the cross, the bad thief, well, they both were thieves, but the, the one thief said, uh, listen, if you who you say you are, save yourself and us too. Then I'll believe you. But Jesus did the will of God to the point of giving up his very life. 
that is a life totally submitted to the will of God. Maybe God will say for some of you, I don't want you to get married. And you say, well, everybody getting married. I, I know the I had my dress picked out since I was seven. I knew just how I want. But God come along and say, I don't want you to get married. Can you say, yes, Lord? Not my will, but your will be done. Huh? You, you could have... Uh, you could be a great singer and you, you've you got it all planned. Your family might even be planning. We're going to get you a record. We're going to get you out there. And God say, no, that's not what I want for you. I want you to sing at this little church right over here. And you may sing better than Mahalia. You may be one of the greatest singers ever were. And know that your voice could be known around the world. And God say, no, I want you right here. Will you say, not my will, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will. But see, that's taking up your cross, denying yourself. That's you looking foolish before your family, looking foolish before people because they're saying, are you kidding me? Do you know what you can do with this? Do you know who you are? And you say, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, not my will. That is who is going into the new earth. That's the meek that we're talking about here. Let's see what God says about Jesus Christ. And we, we really are almost done here, guys. We're going to go to Matthew, the 17th chapter. I don't know about you, but this is blessing my socks off. I'm telling you, this is ministering to me. Matthew 17 and then verse 5. Yes, says... While he yet spake, and of course, uh, let's see, that, that was Jesus speaking. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the, wait a minute, you guys, hang on. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, listen to what God said about Jesus. This is my beloved son. And whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. God said, I'm well pleased. Why? Why? What are you well pleased with, God? Jesus said, I'm about to be rejected. I'm about to be rejected of the people in the church. I'm about to be rejected of the high priests. I'm, I'm about to be beat. And I'm going to be slain. Why is it? that you, Father, are well pleased with me because nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, Father. Jesus said, I have bread to eat or food to eat that you know not of. My bread or my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Oh my God, I got to do the will because there are captives that must be free. I must do the will so that the devil, who I could spoil principalities and powers so that the works of the devil can be destroyed so that people can be free and reconciled to the father. Because what he said at the end of, of, of uh, verse 22, he said, but I'm going to rise again. The third day, I'm going to get up again. I know what the will of the Father is. I'm manifested. I'm going to die so that I can destroy the devil's works. I'm coming into the world so that the lost can be found, so that those who sit in darkness can see a great light. That's why I'm coming into the world. That's why I'm going to die. But listen here. But I'm going to rise on the third day. And I'm going to rise with all power in heaven and in earth in my hands. He said, listen here. In the world, you're going to have trouble. But he said, don't worry about it. I overcame the world. And because Jesus overcame sin, we can overcome. And we can be meek people and inherit the earth. We can totally submit these lives to God. Listen, meek people are not weak people. Meek people are people who, un who are not unwise, but they understand.
understand what the will of the Lord is. Meek people are people who know that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions, they fail not, they are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Those are people who are meek. They, Their eyes have been open and they see what God has given to them and done for them through Jesus Christ. And they are very grateful people. They are grateful people. And so it is easy when you understand what God has done for you through Jesus Christ to submit you want to submit you want to obey him oh my god you want to say yes lord yes jesus when you understand the love of god and that it is of his mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion they fail not they are new every morning great is his faithfulness when you understand what God has done for you, you want to submit your life to him. You want to say yes. Yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, you, whoever you want me to be around, the answer is yes. Yes. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if I don't understand. Speak, Father, for your daughter is listening. Oh, my God. Let me read Revelations 21, and I'm going to read verse 1 through 7. And this is John the Revelator talking, put out on the island of Patmos to die. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is at thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son and my daughters. Amen. That was God talking. Now let me say this. This meekness that I'm talking about, it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you look at Galatians, the fifth chapter. Meekness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So you see, you can't, this is not just something you developed in your character. No, no, no. This is in verse 23 of chapter 5 of Galatians. It talks about the, it says, in 22 it says, but the fruit of the Spirit. And in verse 23, one of them is meekness. See, this meekness, it comes from the Holy Spirit. You cannot have the Holy Spirit without having Jesus Christ. So you see, Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus was, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Holy Spirit is your spirit. In order to get this meekness, you got to be reborn by the Holy Spirit because you cannot totally submit your life to God without the Spirit. Spirit of God. You got to be born again by the water and the spirit. And so how am I born again, Nicodemus? I'm an old man. Can I go the second time in my mother's womb and be born? No, Nicodemus. you not like that. Listen, Jesus gets, and we know he gets up to, to uh, John 3, 16, and he tells them, he tells Nicodemus how to be born again. 
whosoever believes on me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father except he comes through me. Listen, if you want to be a citizen of the new Jerusalem, if you want to be a citizen of the new earth where God makes all things new, where there's no more tears, no more sickness, no more murder, no more crime, hallelujah, no more racism, glory to God. If you want to be a citizen of this new Jerusalem, you got to repent of your sins. You've got to ask God, forgive me of my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Folks, it really is that simple. God has removed our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. And as high as the heavens are above the earth. Listen, he chose not to remove, remember our sins and our transgressions and our iniquities no more because God wants that relationship with you. I don't know what the devil told you. I don't know what your mama told you. I don't know what lies this world has told you, but I'm here to tell you today that God loves you. Yeah, you look in the mirror. That's who God loves. Jesus paid the price for you. He totally submitted his will so you could be free. That's it for me. Praise God. I thank the Lord for his word. Listen. Meekness comes by the Holy Ghost. You get the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ. God bless you. I pray that you have a wonderful week. In fact, let's pray. Righteous God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you for speaking to us today. Father, I pray that your word falls on good ground. That the eyes of the people and the ears of the people would be open. That they can see the truth. And that they would hear the truth. That they would know, God, that this earth is going to pass away with all the wickedness that are in it. But those who are meek, those whose lives are totally submitted to you, receiving your will, Jesus Christ. That's who will be in the new heaven and the new earth, Father. I pray that you give people a mind to repent all around the world, for time is short. It's winding up. We don't have much time left, Father. The bridegroom is coming. May we keep oil in our lamps and be ready, for you are coming in a moment in a twinkling of an eye, and we won't have time to repent. We won't have time to say, give me one more chance. We won't have time, God. Seek and save lost souls, Father. Send laborers into the harvest that is plentiful. We bless you and we thank you, God. Save our family members. Save our friends and our enemies, for you saved your enemies, Father. Save our presidents and our world leaders around the world. Let them know, God, they're going to answer to you for what they are doing, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that it falls on good ground and bring forth fruit 100%. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Flora. God bless you, Donna. I pray that you have a wonderful week in Jesus. God bless.